Today on Listen Up, Mohammed Ali, Angelina Jolie, and John Lennon, all in the latest version of the Bible. Smart marketing or sacrilege? A new look for an old book, next. Welcome to Listen Up, I'm Lorna Duick. The Bible, it's been called the most influential text in all of Western culture. Quoted as a spiritual and moral authority for centuries, it's composed of writings by more than 40 authors written over a period of about 1,600 years. The Bible has been such an integral part of Western civilization, it's widely considered a literary classic. But it's a classic that's no longer widely read. Recent studies in the United States reveal substantial numbers of people today lack even the most basic working knowledge of the Bible, something the Vatican grappled with at its recent Synod of Bishops. They met to examine the text of the Bible and to question why people do not use the Bible effectively in their lives. That could soon change if the publishers of this book have their way. It's called The Bible Illuminated, a softcover magazine-style book with glossy pages. Here you'll find the words of Jesus intermingled with compelling, often tragic images. And when it was first launched in Sweden, a mostly secular nation, Bible sales took off, soaring by 50% in one year. Bible Illuminated is getting ready to take over the world. Here's how the publishers are promoting their book on YouTube. Today we're looking into the Bible, reviled by some, revered by others, and the most published, best-selling book in history. Later in the show, we'll hear from Dr. Eugene Peterson, the man who translated the Bible version that rock star and humanitarian Bono loves to read. And we'll speak with the publishers of the Bible Illuminated to uncover their motivations for mixing celebrities with the sacred. But first, we wondered what Canadians would think about a glossy, magazine-style version of the Bible. So we sent Listen Up's cultural correspondent, Melinda Estabrooks, to find out. Hi there, can I interrupt your meeting for a second? Yeah, sure. All right, good. All right, just have a quick question for you guys. Do you have time? Am I, in, am I interrupting anything important? I'm always on time. All right, so here's the thing I want to just get your thoughts on. This, take a look at this book and tell me what you think of actually this Bible. And that was the question I brought to a few workplaces around Toronto. Yeah, it's designed very well. It has high production quality, that's for sure. Yeah, I could see it being offensive to some people. I'm not a fan of the tricky Bible approach of we'll make it look like a magazine on the cover and it's actually the Gospel of John when you open it up. So I appreciate that they actually said on the cover what it is. I even had to get people on their lunch break to hear more. The pictures are interesting but they don't seem to have a relevance as far as I'm concerned with the book, with the text. Being the Word of God in a magazine, I'm okay with it, as long as there's not provocative pictures in it. I think it's an interesting modern concept on the Bible, whether I actually agree with it. I'm, I'm not sure what I think. Um, the pictures are very modern, um, up-to-date photos that are compelling to our generation, especially uh, being youth. Um, if this is the appropriate way to reach out to Christians, I'm not sure. Um, it might interest people to pick it up and take a read of it. It also might um, cause a lot of controversy. But with that being said, um, it is something to look into. And after a full day of questions and discussion about this illuminated Bible, it wasn't Jesus or the disciples or even the sacraments that kept coming up over and over again. But, no surprise here, Angelina Jolie. So what did most people think of her picture in the good book? I Can I see? <laughs> yeah, I, I love Angelina Jolie. <laughs> which, Can we which find that on? <laughs> Reporting for Listen Up TV, I'm Melinda Estabrooks. It's a Bible that's not aimed at a religious audience. And joining me now from New York are publishers Dog Soderberg and Larry Norton. Gentlemen, thank you for being with Listen Up. 
Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Okay, let's start with you, Doug. Why did you undertake this project? It began in Sweden. It's coming now to North America. What's your goal in doing it? The thing is that the Bible in itself is the most sold book ever. Every year it's also the biggest sell is the, is the Bible. So um, and where do you often find it? You find it in the bookshelf. And that's sad because it's our heritage in there. It's a literary treasure. Okay, and Larry, now as this comes to North America, and you know we have no shortage of versions of the Bible, 350 alone at one publisher's, why does adding art to this Bible, current art, uh, that is of real life, um, pictures we'd all recognize, people like Lady Di, people like Muhammad Ali, John Lennon, some of the social angst, some of the poverty issues in Africa, how does that impact the text? Well, at Bible Illuminated, we really believe that there are uh, many Bibles that are just simply not read. And the idea is, is to bring people to open the Bible, look at the Bible, look inside. And the photographs are a way to invite people in. Okay, why do you want them to open the Bible? What's your mission? The Bible is, is so important to who we are, and we really are just trying to spread understanding. The more, the more you understand where you come from, the more you understand yourself. Okay, but you're not doing this from an overtly Christian perspective. All your marketing seems to be as broad and, and pop culture oriented as possible. We're trying to reach the many, not the few. We are trying to reach as many people as possible. There is a broad, broad audience out there who really aren't familiar with the Bible, and this is a new way. You know, this is our year where there is global uncertainty over our economic times. Uh, do you think this um, has a, a pull on society that it, it might not have had in a more comfortable year? I, I do, actually. I think that our, our research, the, the research we've done at Bible Illuminated has found that in hard times, people do turn to the Bible more often. They are seeking spiritual solace in some way to address their concerns. So. And there are many people who may be turning it to, to it for the first time. And this might be the one they turn to. Bible Illuminate. All right. All I like it, guys. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. When we come back, 11 million copies sold of a street language Bible. Author Dr. Eugene Peterson gives his first TV interview ever. Only on Listen Up. What I learned was when God wants us to have his word, his revelation. He uses the language that we use every day. This segment brought to you by Samaritan's Purse. For more information, visit SamaritansPurse.ca. There's more to listen up than what you see on TV. Check out our website. You'll find blogs to comment on, questions to answer, a poll to take, and clips to watch. Pay us a visit and answer our viewer question of this week. What would it take for you to read the Bible? We'd love to hear your view. Find us at listenuptv.com. When the Bible was modernized into American street language, it sold over 11 million copies. The author of that recent project, Dr. Eugene Peterson, retreated from the public eye and only today gives his first TV interview ever. I met with Eugene Peterson at his home in rural Montana to ask him why he undertook such an ambitious project. Well, Dr. Peterson, the most read book of all time with a new look and one of your uh, writings has been that the Bible is a plunge into reality. So here we've got reality in a Bible. We've got oil spills, we've got New Orleans, our own Armageddon-like pictures. What do you think of a new Bible and its illumination? It's very, it's fascinating and it's accurate um, because the biggest hurdle people have um, in reading the Bible is setting on a shelf and thinking it's a holy book a reverent book, and uh, it doesn't have anything to do with their lives. And the whole task of um, Bible translation is to get past that and get it into the, into the language, the culture of today. So that's wonderful. He's a man passionate about words. He's devoted his life to studying them, 
And when it comes to the book known as the Word of God, well, he's an expert there too, translating the Bible from its original languages into contemporary American. Well, help us understand what is a Bible? Well, the word actually means book. It's biblos. And it's just, that's all it is, is a book. They didn't start with a Bible. They started with worship, started with stories, started with prayers. And then people would come forth who were really good at this, good storytellers, good poets. And these things were written and the people found that this was not just a book, just not just writing like anything else, but there was something, um, they detected some, um, well, spirit of God, spirit, aliveness. And um, they started collecting them and gradually we got what we have now. And is it the voice of God? Are these the words of God? Not exactly. Uh, I don't think uh, God speaks in Greek or Hebrew or English. Um, these are words which God uses in order to get His word, His, His salvation revealed to us. It's revelation is what it is. Heady stuff, but at 76, this professor has spent decades pastoring and teaching. He believes people need to do more than just read the Bible. They need to understand its story. And every couple of generations, um, the Bible is, the language of the Bible is modernized to make it a, a common language or to keep it a common language. Tell us about your experience, your invitation to make the common language. This is my, um, my Bible that you've written. Are you comfortable being with that? You've written my Bible that I'm reading? Sounds a little pretentious. <laughs> okay, but this is the message which you spent 10 years of your life doing, at least 10 years, right? 12. 12 to get this done. You took those ancient words and it was your turn to modernize them. That's right. And what, what did you learn in the process? What I learned was when God wants us to have His Word, His revelation, He uses the language that we use every day. And what are the sensitivities then of taking those ancient words and modernizing them? Well, it's difficult um, because people get used to um, a Bible read in church. And, um, and we, see, one of the things that we have, which is, um, is wonderful, but also a problem, is the King James Version of the Bible. That was translated in England when the English language was at its highest, its best. These are the, this is the time of Shakespeare, of Milton. Um, and so this language became the translation language into English, which was far different from the way it was in Greek. So they, even in that time, it was not the language of the people. It was elevated. This bookshelf is filled with the fruit of Eugene Peterson's efforts to wrestle the elevated language of Christianity's Bible back to what it was intended to be, easily read, easily understood, a book of sacred words inspired by a loving God. It's called The Message. When Listen Up returns, what is it about these words that gives them their sacred power? They teach you that God is present in your life, that God speaks words which make you who you are. Closed captioning provided by Duca Financial Services Credit Union. Discover more affordable banking at duca.com. We love getting your calls, voicemails, emails, video clips and letters. Pop by our website and answer this week's poll question. Do you think adding celebrity photos to the Bible alters its message? You'll find all our polling at listenuptv.com.
Well, packaging aside, is there something about the words of this Bible that have given this book its staying power? We asked scholar and Bible translator of the popular Bible called The Message, Dr. Eugene Peterson. You use the term sacred words, sacred language, your language in the message. I don't think you'd call it sacred. I'm thinking like a verse like uh, Matthew 6, 34, concentrate on what God is doing right now. I mean, it doesn't get any plainer than that. How do you still know that these are inspired by God? Those, that, that this is still uh, the ideas of God coming through when it gets through that many levels of modernizing? Well, you have to be very careful. Um, the, the kind of principle I had in my mind as I did this is when people read Isaiah in the Hebrew times, they didn't need a dictionary to find out what he said. They didn't need a handbook to explain things. Um, when people read the Gospel of John in New Testament times, they didn't, they didn't have to have a teacher. Um, they didn't have to have anybody explain this. So if, you can, if, the, if the language at that point was, accept, was understandable without uh, a lot of learning, I think we can do that again. I don't want to oversimplify this, but all language is sacred. Language is a gift of God. Language is what distinguishes us from all the other plant, animal life on the planet. And when that begins to be experienced as revelation, as love, as forgiveness, that's, there's something going on there that's very close to, well, it's not close to it is, the Spirit of God. So yes, it is inspired. So these are conversations inspired by the Spirit of God that teach me. Yes. Tell me what they teach. What, what do these ancient stories of people's experience teach me? They teach you that God is present in your life, that God speaks words which make you who you are, God speaks words that change who you are, deal with your sin, your guilt, whatever, your doubts. Here at Peterson's home in rural Montana, God's presence does seem close, and it's been very deliberate for Eugene and his wife Jan to cultivate that. 11 million copies of his Bible have been sold, over 30 other books written, but he's never employed any staff to help. In this first TV interview he's ever granted, he explains that busyness and technology needs to be kept at bay so the voice of God can be connected with. Number one, turn off the television. You told me that the average person in Canada watches 21 hours of television. Number two, um, do some memorizing. Memorizing is the easiest way to keep something important in your mind in a meditative way. The Bible is a story. Now, some people say, well, it's a lot of things. It's poetry, it's sermons, it's genealogies, it's proverbs. No, it's a story. Now, Jesus is the story complete. And you wanted people to get to know the story of Jesus. Yeah. Why? Why? Why was that important to you? See, what I wanted, what I was hoping to do in, in, in translating the message was to get people into the story. I tell people, don't study the Bible. Read it. Read it like you're reading a letter. Uh, read it like you're reading a novel. Let the truth of the book shape your life. But don't ask too many questions. You're not looking for information. You're looking for a relationship. So if we can get past the religious uh, patina that's been put over everything, we become more human and more Christian at the same time. Or maybe I should say more human and more saved at exactly the same time. Um, save is a big word for us. Um, do you know what the word means? 
in Hebrew it means space. Give us space. Salvation is, is a prairie. Um, all the fences are down. All the doors are opened. Uh, salvation is entering into largeness, God's largeness. And um, I love that word. If we stay with this, if we pay attention to what's going on, stay with this book, stay with these words, there's no way in which we can uh, not eventually get caught into the conversation, brought into the conversation. And that's what we're doing. And that's why we have these Bibles all over the world. When we return, I'll share my personal thoughts on new looks for the good book in the wrap. If this show has made you want to read the Bible, and in one of the newer versions we feature today, write to us and we'll get you connected to the good book. Listen up at listenuptv.com to get your own copy of the message or the Bible Illuminated. The world loves to read, and those of us who like to read the Bible boast that it is the best seller of all times. It may have 1,400 years of sales records, but in the last decade, publishing experts record that the Harry Potter series actually far outsold the Bible. And I will agree that the Bible is not an entertaining and an escapist read. I am in favor of the Bible illuminated or the message. Both are careful approaches to make the ancient language more accessible. One publisher has 350 different versions of the Bible out. Chances are you can find something marketed to your style. One of the ways I read my Bible is all alone, very quietly, usually early in the morning. I read a short piece and then I ask three questions. What does it say about God? How does that make me feel? And what should I do as a result? It's a slow read, but it is a read that teaches us, forms us, and blesses us. The Bible, a conversation with God that is also a plunge into reality. We've put some great links up at listenuptv.com on how you can get involved in Bible reading. Thanks for watching. For all of us at Listen Up TV, I'm Lorna Duick.